Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We are back here at the entrance to our ski resort and I love some of the acronyms some of you guys came up with for the word snag. Some people were like super nifty alpine holiday grounds. I think Lady Maggi was the person who came up with that. I kind of like that. Let's go Let's go with that or, or, or something like it. I think there were some, some pretty inventive ones in the comments. But uh, today, yes, uh, we are going to be working a little bit more on the area around here. And I mentioned yesterday setting up a car park sort of thing over here maybe and having some kind of, you know, vehicles in the parking lot as though tour groups have come in like a bunch of would-be skiers and snowboarders have gotten off the bus. And I figured around here would be a good place to build it. It's probably going to be quite large, but we'll need a bridge over the river and then an immediate left turn into an area like this. And it can probably be quite expansive over here. I certainly have a fair amount of grey concrete powder ready to go, so I think we should make a start on that. I will need to dip back and forth to Founders Forge to get some materials though because the ambitions I have for this place are kind of exceeding the infrastructure I have set up here. For example, I have a plan to build a coach and maybe a couple of cars today, and that's going to require a lot of concrete, and I do not have the materials to make concrete around here. I don't even know there's a couple of red flowers over there. I need a lot of red dye. <laughs> so I don't think the uh, snow plains is going to provide much of that for me. But I'm going to grab all of this concrete powder out of here. I will probably drop off a couple of the other things just so I've got a little bit of a clear inventory and a clearer mind. And we'll lay out the boundaries of this car park over here. So the bridge is going to come across there. It's probably going to hit land sort of over here. Then the road is going to come this way. And I probably want the road to stay roughly the same sort of size. It could narrow a little bit. We could have a little bit of infrastructure around here, just a, a, a roundabout or something like that. Maybe I'm British. I, I have roundabouts on the brain. But then if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we have that be the entrance there. And then, you know what? Yeah, we could probably just have this go all the way around here, around this side. We could probably... We want to keep it on one level, really. Maybe I should try not to waste concrete too much at this stage and put some stone or something underneath it for the sake of propping this place up once it gets out over the side here. Seems reasonable to assume that we'd be building this on some sort of stone foundation anyway, and we do want it to be fairly large because the vehicles that we're planning on building here are going to be fairly realistic to player scale. That's really the compromise you have to make when you're building anything sort of realistic in Minecraft, is you have to compromise between player scale and the level of detail you can put into something, and you'll find yourself trying to figure out what the best ratio of that is, whether you're going to build something that looks ridiculously large for the scale of the player just so you can fit details in or if you're going to compromise on the amount of detail and just kind of fill in the rest with your imagination so you can make something that looks like it's roughly the scale of the player and I feel like this car park idea with the the vehicles I have planned makes a sort of happy medium I guess I think that's about as far out as I want to get let's take a quick look at this from the air now that we've got that corner figured out and just check that that's looking yeah, that's a reasonable size. I think we could probably fit a few vehicles in there. We want like three bus lengths, really, so that we could imagine there is room for buses to pull out and turn around and that kind of thing. And then there will be a smaller parking bay for cars and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting planning something like this for once, though, because the stuff we've been doing over at Founders Forge definitely has a fantasy medieval kind of feel to it. And as such, I only really have to think about like horse and cart travel at the most, whereas the stuff we're going to be building here is quite a bit bigger. And we're going to be keeping bits and pieces of the natural terrain around here but cutting away a whole bunch of the rest of it so that we can make a little bit of room for our urban development here and I think roughly here by the river is a good place to leave it so as we come over here we'll kind of square it off slightly it doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle of course it can have another section over here that might be a little bit shallower than we've got over there but yeah this is looking decent I think this is a, a fairly decent size space for it and we can use some of this dirt of course to put a platform over the top here and we'll probably have to light up underneath it which hopefully we won't need to look at too much but ultimately the concrete powder here being affected by gravity is going to have to rest on top of something so the dirt and grass that I'm picking up from around here is probably going to be it and filling all of this in is going to be a pretty hefty task because we've got a pretty large space to fill in with dirt and we need to cover that over with the concrete powder so I'm just going to relax. I'm going to put on a podcast. I'm going to just 
hammer through the rest of this, and when we come back, we're going to start marking out the area for our parking lot. So this took about a solid hour to put together, all told, not just grassing over that area, but just going back and getting all of that concrete powder. And we still have a few gaps to fill in in the, uh, the substructure here and there, but we can, of course, decorate the outside of this, bring paths down from the car park area, and I think the next thing to do is really going to be to sort out exactly where to put all of the lines. I think... This section here, like I said, is going to be where the road comes in, so I think there are probably going to be a few parking spaces around here. What I'm thinking of having is like a, a kind of parking booth with a barrier over the front so that people can't just drive in and out, you know, they have to pay parking fees and that kind of stuff. And then maybe on the left-hand side here we can have some short-term parking for cars and stuff just so they could get in and out nice and easily and then the coaches are just going to drive all the way down to the end here it's funny i've never really had to do any kind of civic planning stuff obviously that's really not part of my job in real life or anything so i think i think we're probably gonna just have to wing it and see what happens question mark i guess i guess that's what we'll do but i'm gonna be marking out the lines and stuff with snow layers simply because i just didn't have enough white dye back at the base to put together this entire floor of grey dyed concrete and also make some white concrete as well but I think we'll probably mix it up with white concrete at some point in future when I can be bothered to go and get it when I have the patience to go and get it because white concrete is going to just look like they have painted the same road surface it's going to have the same texture so that totally makes sense to me another thing I thought we could do is have polished andesite here as the kind of um, I don't know what to call them really, like blockers, I guess, the things that you find at the edges of car parks to prevent the cars from like going up and over and, and you know, just being in the way for these things. And maybe we could even just make those out of andesite slabs instead of full blocks to both, you know, break up the amount of resources we're using for it and kind of have them look a little bit more realistic. I think if they are at like this level here, yeah, perfect. Okay, and then either side of that, we are going to have some nice big white lines denoting that this right here is a single parking space. So I guess this right over here is going to be car parking or maybe even bike parking depending on the uh, designs that we want to go with because three blocks wide can fit a decent sized Minecraft car but is still a little bit on the slim side especially if you want to get a little bit of detail in and that's another reason why snow layers aren't necessarily going to work out for the long term because we might want to put some sort of car block here like that and that's going to uh going to go over the line and is going to erase the line because it can't occupy the same space as the snow block but here look at that that's reaching right to the edge of this little space here leaving a little bit of room there i think over here we're going to have maybe even a little kind of uh cafe or a, a maybe a i don't know gas station sort of style convenience store kind of thing not necessarily like a filling station right here but somewhere that people are going to be able to grab a snack or something before they find their way out or perhaps before they leave the place in the first place and now let's move over here i think we can probably do uh i'd say like four or five blocks space and then build another white line there these were like five blocks long six blocks long yeah something like that one two three four five six and then we're going to have that go there at the back and then can we fit another six in here one two three four five six you know i think we can so we're going to have double wide uh, section here for parking spaces that's going to work out famously and the unfortunate problem with this whole area being hollow underneath is that i do occasionally hear a little bit of zombie noise and i have done my best if we actually come down here i can show you i've actually done my best to make sure that the area below here is lit up to the best of my ability so we have rows upon rows of torches and that kind of thing but there are caves under this area as well and there are some spots that get a little bit dark here and there but i've done my best to make sure this area is well lit up because i don't know about you but the last thing i want to hear when i'm parking my car at a ski resort is the sound of a horde of zombies right so i think it's probably best if we have that area lit up it's also going to help if we end up building a mob farm here which i feel like i will probably need to do just so i can get some more white dye right now so maybe that can be another episode this week don't forget of course that if you want extra snow layers to work with and we will be needing a lot of snow layers all you really need to do is set up a snow golem inside a box like this where he can't escape just look at the corner of a block that he's standing on and 
just hold down left click. This is going to burn through your shovel pretty fast, so it's very important to have a shovel with mending, and in this case, I'm using my silk touch shovel because I want to gather the snow layers. If you just want snowballs, because four of those will make a full block of snow instead of eight layers making a full block of snow and obviously having to place it stacked up like that. All you really need to do is swap out the Silk Touch shovel for a regular shovel that doesn't have Silk Touch. You won't get any more snowballs using Fortune or anything like that, but you will at least get yourself a ton of snowballs you can convert easily into snow blocks. Yeah, I think we will leave a nice wide space over here because we'll need one direction for vehicles to come in and another for them to go out again, so I think this is going to be it for the parking on this side. All the way down here, we're going to have our coach parking, and these are going to be quite wide and quite long spaces because the design I have in mind is a bit of a hefty one. So let's start over here, maybe a couple of blocks in from the side. We'll put our little blockers here like so, and we'll do those five blocks wide, and then the space itself is going to be a little wider. We are going to be making the white lines here 16 blocks long and we are going to have them 7 blocks apart. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 blocks in the middle and then on one side and the other side we're going to have our white lines. We're going to repeat this down here a few more spaces. And now if we take a look at this from the air, that's looking like a car park. <laughs> I'd have to say that does look like a car park. Now. We need some cars to move in here, and I brought a few resources with me from Founders Forge, and I might need to go and grab a couple more things, but we're going to be building a nice big tour bus kind of coach thing to start out with, so I've got a bunch of materials here. We're going to be using a lot of looms for this design, actually, which is kind of cool. Uh, we've got a lot of red concrete. We're going to be making some of the remaining grey concrete powder into concrete as well, so that we can use that to decorate a little bit here. And yeah, I'll need to go and grab a couple more resources, but we can figure out a couple of good vehicle designs to go in here. Maybe just vary the colours a couple of different ways, and we can start to make this place a little bit more colourful. Okay, so I'm back. I think I have all of the resources that I need in these two shulker boxes, and I think it's time to get started. I'm going to grab the crafting table from over here, if I didn't have one in my inventory already, and we're going to pick one of these coach spaces because we're going to be building ourselves a nice big tour bus over here. So we're going to start out with our wheels, and for those I'm actually using blocks of coal. If that's a little bit expensive for you, you can always use another black block, like black concrete or black wool, something that's nice and easy for you to get, but I just kind of like the look of blocks of coal. I think they look kind of like a tyre texture almost kind of thing. You can just sort of imagine there being uh, rubber tyre ridges in there and stuff like that. So we're going to start off uh, around here, and we're going to build ourselves a 2 by 2 area here that's going to be the wheel. We're going to leave a gap of three blocks and build another wheel on this opposite side like so. And then we're going to go back here and we're going to count out one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. And then we're going to build another set of wheels there and there. We're going to have enough room for that. I think maybe we need to shift it one block further this way. Yeah, there we go. We need at least one block's worth of space before we hit this blocker kind of thing over here. So that should be plenty. And over here, we'll do the same thing. We'll mirror these wheels on the opposite side. And this is because when you see buses of this kind of size, coaches and that kind of thing, they always, they always have a second set of wheels at the back. I'm not entirely sure why they just kind of have them there. Maybe they're spares. Maybe they are just you know, there in case it needs a little extra traction. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. And I've got some smooth sandstone blocks here. Smooth sandstone is the one that you have to smelt regular sandstone in a furnace to get. And I've broken that down into stairs and slabs, which we're going to use to form the kind of wheel arches on the outside of the truck here. And thankfully, it's kind of cool. You can actually get underneath this section here now by crouching with the new crouch height. So it's super easy to get the stairs placed in the right formation and we're going to be building out to the side like that so the second the bottom half of that stair kind of has a slab coming off of it and a slab underneath it and we're going to be doing that for all of the wheels on both sides so they end up looking like this and they have these kind of like wheel arches that conceal the fact that this is just a two by two block and make them look a little bit more rounded at the top there we're going to stash those sandstone pieces away and we're going to grab the looms and i've got a whole bunch of these they're nice and cheap to make they are just two string and two wood each and we're going to use the to kind of represent 
compartments on the side of the vehicle like so, as though it's got kind of paneling on the sides. The side texture of looms is actually really nice for this, so I'm going to put that all the way along here, and at the front it's actually going to double up as kind of headlights or, you know, some sort of front detail like so. We're going to bring that two blocks further out so that there is one sticking out from the wheel arch there, and then we're going to go one block more, and on this side we are actually going to replace that with an area where pedestrians can get out of the vehicle. This front part here is going to be filled up with note blocks and we're going to put one extra note block on there and then we're going to put another loom on top of there and another loom on top of that block there so the front of it looks like this. Underneath this loom here I'm going to build out a little row of polished andesite slabs. We're going to come around the front here like so, make a few more of those as we go and they're going to connect up to the bottom half of that wheel there forming this kind of like fender underneath there. We're going to continue that underneath the looms around the sides and we're going to end it at the back here with two there and the looms on the back are going to face this way as well. We're going to effectively have those be our rear headlights. We're also going to have some item frames above those in a second that are going to contain glass panes for some additional like indicator lights or something like that. I guess they're not headlights if they're on the back of the vehicle, but you know what I mean, like rear-facing lamps. The next step is going to be to take some oak logs, craft those into oak wood, which has the bark texture on all six sides, and then we're going to use these to line the top of the row of looms over the top here. Coming to the back here to make sure that all of the textures are in line, we are then going to take our axe out and strip those logs so that they just have the stripped wood texture. We are going to leave a space here that's going to be completely surrounded in a second by red concrete, but it's going to be wood panelling all the way up to this part. And we're going to do the same thing here on the opposite side as well, just panelling the entire thing until we get to about there. And this is where the driver's cab is going to be, so that's going to be exclusively made out of red concrete. Of course, if you wanted to conserve resources, technically speaking, only the front logs and the back logs on the ends here would have to be the all six side bark texture the rest of them could just be regular oak logs if you wanted to but uh, yeah not to worry we don't need to worry too much about that next up we are going to lay out the interior first just to get a better idea of how this is going to look we're going to grab some gray and black wool and that's effectively going to form two rows of carpet on either side and one row down the middle and the row here is where we're going to have all of the seats on either side and the central aisle is just where people are going to be able to walk down to get to their seats now we can't exactly make the seats two people wide or anything like you would probably normally find on a coach but it's going to be a luxury coach I guess so single person seating on both sides. We'll leave a gap at the back so we can build out the back of the vehicle just lay the grey wool down the middle there we could of course do that with carpet or something if you wanted to and we're going to have it end here and in here we're going to have a little kind of stair step up in a second we're going to leave that for the moment and just move on to building the outer sort of chassis of the vehicle with red concrete and grey concrete. That's going to build up around the front here in a nice thick layer like so. We're going to put one grey concrete on either side like that and then we're going to leave a gap here for some glass that we're going to be putting in a little bit later. We're going to fill in this side with red concrete and on this side we are going to leave a space underneath here for a door to go in and I brought an acacia door for that. I think that's probably going to fit the best into this red vehicle and I think we could probably even fill that in there with a red surround as well. It could be that, it could be the wood panel, it's going to make very little difference at this point, I think. But I'm going to take one of these polished andesite slabs and on the inside we're going to add another stair to step up into the vehicle there. And while that's going to be a little bit difficult to just walk in without crouching, once you crouch you can actually step up onto that andesite slab. So it's actually going to make the interior of this kind of mob proof because mobs won't be able to get through a, a, a step that high. But from where the door is, we're going to have this come back one block more and one block more on that side as well. And then we're going to leave a two block gap for a window for the passengers. And then we'll place a concrete pillar there. Two block gap, concrete pillar, two block gap, concrete pillar, two block gap, concrete pillar. And this is where we're going to fill in the back of the vehicle like so. We'll do the same pattern of concrete on the opposite side. 
And above that, starting on this last block here, I'm going to build a line of grey concrete all the way towards the back. And this is just going to be a stripe down the edge of the vehicle to break up this large area of red concrete we would have otherwise and kind of make it look like the vehicle has some sort of colour scheme or branding on the side of it. We'll add another layer of red concrete onto the top of that and the majority of this is actually going to form the roof of the vehicle. So I'll start to fill it in from the back here, give or take the occasional block that I'm going to inevitably misplace. And I'll get about as far as the driver's enclosure at the front here and we're going to stop so I can grab the glass that's going to form the windscreen and the interior windows. I've got some light blue glass for this which I'm going to turn into light blue panes. That should be more than enough for what we need. And hopping up here once again we're going to grab that and we're going to put it in the central sort of area of the windscreen here. We're going to fill in the side panel with glass there as well and we're going to come up one block on top of these grey concrete on either side, connect all of that and then we're going to build up a roof of red concrete over the top of that and in the center here leaving a gap on each of the corners where we're going to be placing a polished andesite block instead. I'll just fill that in with two slabs for now like so and we're actually going to dangle some wing mirrors off of these because uh, coaches like this typically have large wing mirrors that hang from the front so that you can see around the large bulk of the vehicle. For that I've just made some iron bars we're going to dangle them off the front of the andesite blocks like this. And there we go, having them dangle two blocks down like that does not look entirely practical when you've got this block on the corner here, but you find that vehicles like this typically have quite long mirrors. I don't know, maybe the driver can see out to the uh, the side of those. Going through the interior here, I'm going to add another andesite slab there so the driver has something to get up onto, but his little enclosure here is actually going to have a seat up there. Now let me grab some more uh, red concrete so I can finish off the back of the vehicle which is still a little bit open and right here we're actually going to have the driver sat up at this height so he can see out of the windscreen nice and easily and yeah he can't really see to the rear view mirrors but hey this isn't the most practical vehicle right? I'm going to fill this in at the back here with red concrete up until this point we're going to fill in the stripe of grey at the sides there. You know what, actually, we might end up leaving this as a large open rear view window like that, yeah, because they'll be able to uh, see out of the back that way as well. And we're going to fill in these windows here on the sides, like so, four nice big windows for the passengers to look out of. Going to fill in this piece of wall there, not quite sure why I didn't add that in the first place. And up here where the driver sits, we're going to add a nether brick seat for him right there with a trap door on the back of it like so. And I think what we'll do is go down all the way to the back and place a bench seat at the back there and then alternate uh, open blocks and nether brick stairs like so and nether brick stairs are just going to look like a nice plush seat here and we'll do those all the way to the front we could always have somebody sat right here at the front if we wanted to but I think it's nice to have them sat at least one block back there and then alternate like this until we have a full set of seats on either side in fact we could bring this roof back a little bit and then just add another spruce trap door on top of there like so so the driver has this nice kind of high column to sit on and I think I think what I did here was build a little um, <laughs> steering wheel with a nether brick fence and an iron trapdoor. So let's see if I can whip up one of those. Oh, I forgot nether brick fences are walls now if you use that recipe. Okay, well, maybe we can make that work. Let's build an iron trapdoor there as well. Hop into the vehicle here and place a nether brick wall. Uh, that's not really going to work very well as the steering column, is it? In fact, I think I built the entire chair a little bit too high. So how about if we sit him there? That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? And we'll have a nether brick wall there and a trapdoor there. Okay, that works a little better. I kind of like that as the as the steering wheel. <laughs> Just about managed to get to the bed before too many mobs ended up spawning. And I might light up the interior of this, if only so I don't end up getting a rude interruption from a creeper while I'm trying to finish off this vehicle. I'm going to add a little bit of detail to the side of this using some oak trap doors. We're also going to have the trap doors kind of covering the front of the vehicle here to hide that note block texture. I think it looks quite good as a note block texture on its own, but the trap doors also give a tiny amount of depth to that, which I really quite like. We can remove a few of the looms over here if you want to include some slightly more realistic storage in this whole design. And I think it's going to be fun to incorporate some barrels behind here. Yeah, I brought some barrels over with me. And then have some spruce trap doors go over the top of them. So effectively, what you've got here is a place for passengers on the coach to store their luggage. You could just kind of roll it into one of those barrels as it opens up. And then with spruce trap doors over the top of those, you could close those off if you wanted to to make it look like the compartment is shut. But if you want to get your luggage, all you have to do is open that up. And we can maybe use this as storage around here while we're building some of the other vehicles. 
I'm also going to use the oak trapdoors as decoration on the side here above each of those red columns just to give a little bit of detail to the side of the bus. We're going to mirror that on the opposite side as well. And we'll do a pattern of four trapdoors like that on the back of the vehicle as well. Now I think we'll do a little bit of stuff to the roof, including bringing this section here out by one block and kind of making it into a loose triangular shape. And then around that, we're going to put a row of polished andesite slabs, which are also going to line the rest of the outside of the roof once I've crafted a few more. And vehicles like this tend to have retractable sunroofs. So I think at the back here, what I'm going to do is create a raised up section of concrete with maybe a three block gap in the middle where we're going to be able to have a little glass window as a skylight kind of thing. There we go. We've got three blue glass inside of there. And maybe on the inside, we can decorate that around the interior with some nether brick slabs or something like that. Here we go with the interior, a few nether brick slabs around the outside like that. So it looks a little bit padded. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I think this has come together pretty well. Now for the finishing touches, this really needs some item frames for the mirrors and additional headlights, but I don't think I brought any leather with me. So I wonder if we can maybe find a cow around here. Hmm, there is one here in the village, but I kind of don't want to kill the village's only cow. So uh, perhaps in one of the forests? Finally found a couple of cows. Man, they are tough to track down. The, the wilderness really is kind of living up to its reputation at this point, and we are struggling to get a little bit of leather. But six leather should be enough. That's two for the headlights, two for the wing mirrors, and two for the rear lights as well. Look how far I had to come, though. And this is really an indication of quite how big this snow biome is. So there we go, touching down back at base, we can make ourselves a few sticks so that we can make some item frames and each of the item frames we can apply to the vehicle, say like here and here for some headlights. We can add them to the sides for some rear view mirrors as well. And a couple on the back there and there. And I don't have many other colors of stained glass with me right now, but we could always just put blue panes in there since those are the ones I brought with me and we have a few of those left over. So there we go. Here is our majestic vehicle it pretty much complete, although I think I forgot an oak trap door on this section here by the driver's seat. There we go. That's looking nice. And you could almost imagine it being a fire truck if you added a uh, ladder made of iron bars to the top of it or something like that. But <laughs> I kind of like the red for the, you know, coach company look. I kind of like that a lot. And even though the wheel arches do stick out, I feel like it looks kind of weirdly naked without them. It just kind of looks like a massive block of coal there. So I kind of like having that element to shape them out. Of course, your mileage may vary and you can feel free to adapt this design however you like. Use different colors, different materials, give it a go and experiment. It is looking a little bit lonely in this parking space all by itself though, so I think I'm going to go ahead and make another one of these. I'm going to do that off camera now that you've seen the step-by-step -step tutorial for how to build this, but I'm going to build another one using the green terracotta that I brought over because I think that's going to make a nice contrasting thing. I've got some stripped birch for that instead of uh, stripped oak logs, so we're going to vary the color scheme ever so slightly, but I think it's going to be nice to have more than one vehicle in this parking lot and we can always add a couple of cars into these spaces as well. And a short time later, we have a second bus and look who showed up. <laughs> Although I think this is a caravan rather than the bus. It's the Wandering Trader. And he once again has very little I'm interested in, but I am really happy with how these turned out. I'm still going to go and grab some more uh, leather and item frames and stuff like that from back in Founders Forge. I feel like that seems like the thing to do instead of hunting down cows fruitlessly in this area for a little while. But that is where we are going to call it for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this little parking lot come together and we will add in a few more vehicles as time goes on. I will try my best to update you on the progress of this but from the air it actually looks really cool over here. I have like one firework to show you this so I guess I better make it count. Let's take a look at this from a distance. Yeah all right it actually looks kind of nice having these giant buses in here now and you can imagine these bringing in groups of tourists to come here to the ski resort. Of course, there's not really much of a ski resort for them to come to yet because we haven't built much of it, but we will be building a whole lot of it in the days to come, and I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Once again, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name is Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.